And now we have symmetric versus skewed. Okay, so let's the conversation begin. Symmetric versus skewed. Take off this. Wouldn't this be great? Clean slate in your lives? <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Woo! I wish I had that when I was a student, right? Just like, oh yeah, <laughs> start over. It's really tough being a student. I feel like, I get it from the other class, they said it was a judgment thing. You get that? It's like you're held grades. accountable for everything. For yeah, it's like a judgment, like a, you're judging. I don't it's know. kind of ridiculous. It's got, yeah, I'm with you, I'm a partner in that. I, I, I reject the idea of judgment. Um, but that's a different conversation. I do not reject the idea of education. Right, Nighthawk? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love it. It's like always so in, deep in thought. I love it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Symmetric versus skewed. Let me ask you about this data. Do you think it's relatively even in terms of its distribution, high to low, or is it skewed, meaning there is extremes on the other side? It's kind of skewed. It's kind of skewed. Which way is it skewed? With high numbers or low numbers? High numbers. High numbers. So this is what happens. We call this, this data, these are good terms, skewed to the right. By the high numbers, the extreme high. highs, I'll show you why. Because like on a number on line? A number yeah, line. extreme highs. Like on a number line. So that would be something like this. And I'll explain why this works. And then you have skewed to the left. And that would be here. That's extreme lows. And then we need a symmetric. That's important too. So put symmetric in here. It's kind of like negotiating the space, you know. All right, so symmetric this is probably what you know it to be. Well, I went to gray. There you go. Over here. So in this case, you have mean and median right over here, grouped around where most of the data sits. Let's stand over here. Most of the data is right around middle, so you have some extreme highs, you have some extreme lows, they sort of more or less cancel each other out. It's great with the sparkle of the glove. <laughs> <laughs> the board's so clean. Thank you for your help this morning. I've got all this like marker stuff on me by being Michael Jackson. So all this stuff is right here, and it's in the middle, the, the measures of center. Now we look over here. If you're skewed to the right, these extreme high values bring the median closer to here. Is it safe to say, is it safe to say that the group, the relative group of data is more on the left, the bulk of the data is on the left when you have extreme highs? Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's let that in for a second. Here it is. Here we agree, mean higher than median, meaning there were extreme highs that we're bringing, dragging the mean up. They're pulling the mean up. And now, that would mean that the median is a better measure of middle. Meaning, no pun intended, meaning, <laughs> meaning that the middle is right around here. That's where most of the people tend to lie. And that's why most of the people tend to lie below where the extremes are here. Questions? So same goes with this. Skewed left has lows. So here you have the bulk, or maybe median. And here you have extremes. Why are the extremes smaller? If it were, that, not in this case. No, 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 just in the graph, because. Oh, here? Yeah, so it says. There's like a smaller amount of numbers. But I thought it said skewed left lows. Does that mean? Yeah, that means extreme lows exist. So more? Yeah, there's more low values. So, and what's interesting about this graph is that it's sort of a misnomer. It says skew to the left. Yeah. The bulk is to the right. Okay. That's why it's confusing. That's why it's, yeah, and, until we learn it, right? 
the bulk, I learned it, like when I learned it too, it was like, wouldn't extreme lows yeah. mean the bulk is to the right, left? Right, right, right. It's not. It's the opposite. Let's look at this, because this is actually applies, it's opposite. Right. This applies to our data. That's a good, we need this dialogue so that it clarifies. The bulk of the data is on the left, meaning there's extremes to the right. That's what moves this bulk to the left. Whereas if you were symmetric, the bulk of everything's in the middle. So it is sort of an opposite effect. So this data lends to incredible power, incredible power. Suppose a, you know, Los Angeles Unified School District is looking at data for different classes. And they look at the teacher's scores, class by class, throughout the county, okay? And my class has a mean of 85%, and the median is 78%. What does that tell, about, tell us about the students in the class? We'll take, we'll take hands. Yes, what does so it tell us? There's got to be like a, a few really high grades. Yeah, a few high grades. And the rest? Lower. Where? C's. C's. Roughly C's, yeah. Maybe yeah. Maybe. So wouldn't it? Yes. So then someone looking at this can look at my class system and say, well, there's going to be top performers in just about every class, no matter what, whether it's history, math, English, all that stuff. And so this teacher is not necessarily as effective based on just the mean. Because you could look at the mean and say, oh wow, kids are learning. But it's not really the case, is it? Because... The kids with the high grades just bring it up. Bring it up, yeah. Right. And this is really the reality of where most students' scores are. So the ability to compare mean and median is a very useful tool, not just for your grades, but with National salaries, SAT scores, lots of things to compare mean to median. So we had a hand here and then back. Yes. It's a question. Please. For median. Yeah. Like, let's say there's um, ten grades, right? Yeah. And there's like four Fs in the beginning. Yeah. And then there's two Cs. Okay. I don't know if this will work out. Two Cs. Yeah. So, and then four. Uh, yeah. E's. Four, oh, E's. No, four, four A's. Four A's. Then when you do so, extreme highs and extreme lows. But then when you do your median, you end up having C. You'll end up having C, right. but it's not a good. Uh, In this case, okay. extreme highs and extreme lows cancel each other they out. Cancel they cancel each other out. So the mean and the median would be roughly similar in this case. Wait, why would they cancel? Because you have four high grade, four low grades, four high grades. Uh -huh. So there's you have equal numbers of extremes. Oh, but your mean would be different. And your median. Your mm. median would end up being around C. And mean. Oh, got it. It pulls this way. One A pulls this way. F pulls this way. A pulls this way. So it's an equal battle of tug and tug of war. Okay. Okay. Yes, please. I was just gonna say I think a lot of students get really freaked out when they're applying to college and they're looking at all these average SAT scores and average GPA. Yeah. And they don't realize that. I mean, yeah, there are going to be extreme lows, but most of the time there's a lot more extreme highs in terms of like yeah. GPA and people getting, you know, right. more academic, whatever, especially like yeah. applying to large colleges. So you get freaked out like, oh, I can't apply to this college because I'm not going to get yeah. it because the, I'm not in their average range. You know? yeah, they don't re yeah, they don't really account for all the extreme highs that are pulling the mean high. Right. But the bulk of people aren't necessarily where the mean is. Yeah. That's right. The bulk of people more were the median. But the college, I mean, they would want to put the average, not the median. Probably. Why would they do that? Because they want to be better. They want to seem yeah, like they a more seem. academically enthused college, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 